fights, unnecessary fights. In the middle of everything. So I was having an issue with my girlfriend at the time. I was confused. I didn't know where I was going with life. I didn't know where I was going with life. So things started getting really, really bad. Some of the things she didn't even know. Because of this, we Because a lot of people listen to us to speak in Rwanda. And, uh, you know, when I started music, I was in Rwanda. And my vision was to just do King Rwanda and music in King Rwanda. So when I came to the US, I didn't know how big the world was. So I said maybe I should change my vision to reach out the whole world. But I was doing uh, that with the wrong intention. You know, living life without God. Is to fool yourself. Um, I grew up in church, like most of you know. I sang in a choir. And they say my voice was beautiful, so I could do more with that. I went outside of the church. I went outside of the church. And I started singing, and I met my. I got famous. You know, sometimes when you're looking for something, you finally find it. At that time, you might understand that that's not what you needed. And I'm going to show you how to do this. And I'm going to show you how to do this. We are looking after money. We are running after money. Some are planning to finish their studies. I shall call our businesses and look at other going to different businesses. But every time you reach a goal, I could you can you can you can you say you only want more. And at some point in my life I was wondering what am I looking for in life? Because everything I wanted, I was I was seeing it. Um, and it was easy. I was making money easily. People said, love me. I, you know, when you go in a big, a big crowd, and people are singing your name, you might feel something about it. But there's also a personal life that nobody knows. Some people manage to, to suffocate that life and fake everything. They managed to, to pretend. But it really takes the grace of God to come out of that. I was in my room in Texas. I had a different conferences all over the world. I even went back home. Everything was good. But suddenly something hit me out of nowhere. I just realized that everything I was looking for, I got it. But my heart was just racing all the time. People say I was uh, romantic and because of love songs. But the craziest thing about love songs, the ones that are singing the songs, they're not automatically, oh, they're not romantic. Because they know that they are looking for something that is not what they are looking for. I had a girlfriend at the time. And she's my wife now. I'm going to be my wife now. Um, our relationship was weird. 
Because people assume somehow I was romantic. But the truth is, I was selfish. You see, in a relationship, you might say you're in love, but it only takes a little bit of frustration. You realize you're not in love. So that kind of love is fake. I don't care how much you think you love. It's just, it takes one person to make you mad, you know? So that kind of love is centered in selfishness. So when I met my wife, I tricked her into me being a good, a cool guy, and, you know, romantic and all that. She didn't even know I was famous in my country, you know? I got out there as she didn't know she that. Didn't that. So when she got to know it, she realized it was a problem. You know, if you go to a concert, and you have a wife, and she sees that every girl is looking for you. It can make you very insecure. So we started having weird relationships, like in a way that it was she was supposed to be doing something, then I'm happy. If she doesn't do it, I'm not happy. We had some I was getting lost. I was lost. Somehow. So, so I was having an issue with my girlfriend at the time. I was confused. I didn't know where I was going with life. I didn't know where I was going with life. So, things started getting really, really bad. Some of the things she didn't even know. Because of being famous, I, I learned a way to, to keep everything for, you know, on me and for myself, nobody knew anything about me. A lot of famous people, that's why they struggle with it. So I was lost. And I was lost. And I was lost. And I was lost. I was lost. And 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 I heard this while I was still young. Could you have been your That this happens among young people, famous people. But I can't ignore it. I call it their task. So that thing happened to me too. I was in Belgium one day in Brussels. I had a concert. The whole thing was packed. We had a great concert. I went back in my room. I had never felt so empty in my life. What I'm talking about, it might not relate. But I pray to God that you are convinced. You know, people who go to hell, it's not because they didn't hear these things. It's because they didn't believe it. Have you ever had a, a close, maybe like your mom or your father or your sister who passed away? Sometimes it's not something you thought about that they would go, you know? But when they go, you're almost shocked. So the question is that, did you think they were going to live forever? The difference is because you just don't believe it. Your heart is not convinced about those things. Unless the, the reality of God is deep in your heart, you'll keep forcing these things. But you don't have to hit rock bottom for you to change your mind. Some people receive it, some people don't. And it's okay. There's no way in the Bible um, 
the Bible, there's no way the Bible says we will all go to heaven. There's no way that says that. Do you know that way? That we will all go to heaven. And it's not to say that we should do this so we can go to heaven. You know, we are saved so, can, so heaven can come into us. Some of us, heaven has started already. When we take off from this place, it will be just like a continuation. So, some people, they say they're Christians. But they don't believe it. Are you surprised? Because every time when somebody dies, they say he went to heaven. That statement always bothered me. You can't live with an assumption, you know? You can't just assume your whole life. And for me, I don't, I'm the, I'm the kind of person that don't, I don't settle with assumptions. Either I know it or I don't. But I don't want to live in uncertainty. You know? A lot of religions, they promise heaven. They even tell them, you have to do this and do this to go to heaven. But there's only one person. I promised that you can know you can go to heaven today. You don't have to wait now. I think that's better, you know. I'd rather believe somebody that says that they know than believe somebody who says, I might or I might. There's only one person in this whole universe that claimed. And the way, the truth, and the life. There's only one person. There's no time that you can say that. I do, I do, I do a lot of reading very well. Over here. Since long ago. Yes, I wanted to know the truth about life. Because I didn't want to be wrong, you know. What's the point of having everything and have everybody who told you, but yet you are losing. And to one of you, I was at the end, you know. I grew up uh, in Michael Jackson. When he died, I was young. I mean, you have to be stupid to ignore everything that happened. The guy was having a blast. Somewhere. He can say. He had a good time, let's say. He had an amazing concert. People, people were fainting. By the way, I've seen people fainting in my concert. I did. I'm serious. And I was confused. I said, I'm sure this is not the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Must be something else. Everything was going to create a confusion in my heart. I saw people crying. Crying with tears. I said, what do they see? That I don't see. But you see, this is what happens. Our minds are programmed. And it starts when we are young. We create passions in our hearts. We think a certain way. And somehow those things start controlling us. And something manifests in your body. And you say this is real. It's not real. You know, America is almost falling apart right now. There's so much confusion going on. Some people don't even know who they are anymore. But you know why? They lost the standard of truth. When you lose truth, 
is not making your own truth. So some people are so convinced about something. And it has nothing to do with the truth. It's their truth. But let me tell you something. Truth is an absolute. Truth is a straight line. The truth is a person. Truth came here on earth at some point. And he proclaimed that it was truth. He said he was the way. And the life. So how can you ignore all, all those things? And even assumptions. Let me talk to you about purpose. When I was young, I wanted to know where I was supposed to do as a, a, a daily step of my life. I was a very young man. I used to think a lot. And my mother would come to me, what are you thinking about? And I realized she wouldn't even understand what I'm thinking about. And I never said anything. I started having visions when I was young. On my bed. I see something. I wake up in the morning. I see exactly what I saw in my head. I saw in dreams. Jesus will come in my dreams. I thought maybe I was brainwashed. Because my life was going in a way that was completely opposite of where so I wondered, what am I supposed to be doing? Because I said, if there's such a thing as a purpose, and I lose it, then my life is meaningless. Let me tell you something. You were born. Your parents didn't know it was you coming. They only wanted a child. They didn't know it was a trick. They didn't know how you were going to look like. So they had no idea. They, they had no idea who you were going to be. But it's one person who knows who you are. That same person, eventually you have to face him at hand. This is the only chance you get to make up your mind. When I go visit to uh, talk about my testimony, I don't, I don't always say they will believe what I'm saying. It's not my business really to make you believe what I'm saying. I was only told to tell you. I have gained so much in my business. So me telling you that I saw Jesus because even the disciples were with Jesus. They still, they still denied it. And they were with him. It's only the Holy Spirit that convinces. It's not my words. It's not my experience. My experience is only good for me. I know that I'm sure. But do you know Are you sure? Can you know that I'm sure? Can you know that I'm sure? So my life completely changed in my room. I started clearing my phone. I had one thing with my girlfriend at the time. I told my girlfriend we can't live together. She said, what? I said, we have to get married for us to be to live together. You know what she said? She said, that's so cute. I said, you don't understand. It's not about cuteness. I'm a different man. She was confused. She comes from a different background. We party together. We party together. We traveled around the world. Smoking, hookah. Drinking. I used to I used to give her alcohol because I thought it was fun if I if you could only get a little tipsy. I thought it was cute. 
And then out of a sudden, I became a pastor. She said, I don't know who you are anymore. You know what I did? I started praying for her. I prayed for her. Every day. Every night. I said, Jesus, if you revealed yourself to me, reveal yourself to her. Every night. Every day. Every night. Every night. She she said, a man. She said something that I don't understand. I said, what did she what did he say? He said, I told him I was thirsty. He said, I'll, I'll give you the water. I said, Jesus. Jesus. I said, I said, what? Jesus. She said, what? 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 She it's just so. I went back in my room. So I was still praying again. I said, so Jesus, yes, so give her another drink. Oh boy, can't give her another drink. Yes, yeah, Jesus, she opened it. As he said, she kept having drinks. I come and say again, Jesus. I'm talking about Bible drinks. In so this generation, we need to learn something. It's hard to talk about the gospel if you haven't experienced it. I never knew how to speak like this in front of me. I'm telling you. I was even shy. As soon as I received the Holy Spirit, I came out of my body. I was preaching the gospel in Walmart. Every person that would knock on my door, I would have them saved. I became sold out. I was talking about Jesus. Only about Jesus. Jesus. Let me tell you something. I don't care about anything. It doesn't matter what people say. I passed that level. That is the reason why I came here. I want you to have the same mindset. The same fire in you. If God can do it in my heart, I can do it for you. I'm not too far gone. I started praying for my wife. So I would go outside to pray at night. And then she asked me, How do you pray? I said, Why don't you come and pray with me? She said, How do you pray? I said, Just come. You have nothing to reason. So we went in the park at night. I started praying. I started speaking in tongues. Can you imagine? Maybe he speaks in tongues. <laughs> she goes, praying in Kinyarwanda. <laughs> she started crying. She said, baby, I don't want to cry. I knew the Holy Spirit was doing something. She couldn't stop crying. I was so excited in my heart. She kept crying. She said, I don't know how I'm feeling. What is this? You know, it was a challenge because she had no, she, she had no idea. She doesn't nothing about Jesus. Zero. I told her, let's go back. Second time we went there, she had another dream. Again, Jesus. When she woke up, she said, Baby, I think I'm going to follow Jesus. She said, What? You know what I did? I led her to Christ. So we keep up telling me, I said, Lord Jesus, I receive you in my heart. Boy. That was the beginning of my life. You come to my house. The full happiness. Full peace. Every relationship that's not centered in God. Is centered on selfishness. I'm talking to you because um, I know these things. They happen to you. There's an image that people have about me. But there's another image that God has. 